Good afternoon. Welcome to Legion of Mary, Wilmington Curia, Divine Mercy, Holy Hour. This is Emily Osmond and Denise Turner from the Legion of Mary, Wilmington Curia in Delaware, United States of America. Today is June 7, Friday, the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. And also, June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. So after we pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet and the Stations of the Cross, we will talk about the history of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. In this hour of grace, where mercy triumphs over justice, let us immerse ourselves completely in the Lord's mercy, adoring, glorifying, invoking His omnipotence for the whole world and particularly for poor sinners. Let us pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You expired, Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. A fount of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water, which gushed forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, Life Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord, Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have a mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have a mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 
have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in and atonement for our sins, sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in an atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and the those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, 
Holy Immortal One, have a mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, now we will pray the pro-life stations of the cross. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In profound humility, I adore you, my Lord and my God. I believe in you, I hope in you, and I love you above all things. I am heartily sorry that I have off ever offended you, great and lovable above all beings. I will make this way of the cross for your greater glory and for the salvation of souls. The first station. Pilate condemns Jesus to die. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus Christ, after being scourged and crowned with thorns, was unjustly condemned by Pilate to die on the cross. Though innocent, Jesus is condemned by the power of the state. In like manner, our innocent brothers and sisters in the womb have been condemned. Their rights and dignity are not recognized. In this, they bear a special likeness to Jesus. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The second station. Jesus accepts his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider Jesus as he walked this road with the cross on his shoulders, thinking of us and offering to his Father in our behalf the death he was about to suffer. The salvation of the world carried a heavy price for our Lord, the agony of the cross. As he accepts his cross, let us also resolve to endure suffering that others may live. Let us pay the price for standing up, for our pre-born brothers and sisters. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the first fall of Jesus. Loss of blood from the scourging and crowning with thorns had so weakened him 
that he could hardly walk, and yet he had to carry that great load upon his shoulders. As the soldiers struck him cruelly, he fell several times under the heavy cross. Almighty God was weak because he chose to be like us. He had power and glory from all eternity, yet he chose to be immersed in the world of suffering. We pray that the benefits and advantages we have in life may not cause us to forget our preborn brothers and sisters. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The fourth station. Jesus meets his afflicted mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the son met his mother on his way to Calvary. Jesus and Mary gazed at each other, and their looks became as so many arrows to wound those hearts which loved each other so tenderly. There is no deeper relationship than that of mother and child. They belong together. When one suffers, the other suffers. To love and defend one means to love and defend the other. To be pro-life means to serve both the child and the mother. It means to ask our society, why can't we love them both? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Fifth Station, Simon Helps Jesus Carry the Cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how weak and weary Jesus was. At each step he was at the point of expiring, fearing that he would die on the way when they wished him to die the infamous death of the cross. They forced Simon of Cyrene to help carry the cross after our Lord. Many watched the Lord suffer. Simon, the Cyrenian, helped alleviate that suffering. Many lament abortion. Some actually get involved helps to stop it. We pray that all people may take their active place in the pro-life movement. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The sixth station. Veronica offers her veil to Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider the compassion of the holy woman, Veronica. Seeing Jesus in such distress, 
his face bathed in sweat and blood, she presented him with her veil. Jesus wiped his face and left upon the cloth the image of his sacred countenance. The compassion of Veronica shows, reflects the compassion of so many medical doctors and nurses who treat their patients with dignity. We pray for repentance and renewal in the medical profession. May the tools and skills meant for healing never more be used for killing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The seventh station. Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the second fall of Jesus under his cross renews the pain in all the wounds of the head and members of our afflicted Lord. In working to defend life, there are many setbacks and obstacles, yet we know the meaning of the cross. In weakness, power reaches perfection. We do not look to our own strengths and talents alone, but to Christ. His own strength will sustain us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Eighth Station, Jesus Speaks to the Women. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the women wept with compassion, seeing Jesus so distressed and dripping with blood as he walked along. Jesus said to them, Weep not, weep not so much for me, but rather for your children. Christ told these women to weep for themselves and for their children. He does not want false worship, but repentance. He does not want followers who cry out to him, but then ignore injustice and bloodshed. May all who believe in Christ likewise stand up for the defenseless children. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus Christ fell for the, fir for the third time. He was extremely weak, and the cruelty of his executioners was excessive. They tried to hasten his steps, though he hardly had strength to move. This 
Despite the falls, nothing can stop our Lord because he is on a mission of love. If the pro-life movement is not a movement of love, it is nothing at all. But if it is a movement of love, then nothing will stop it. Love is stronger than death, more powerful than hell. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how Jesus was violently stripped of his clothes by his executioners. The inner garments adhered to his lacerated flesh, and the soldiers tore them off so roughly that the skin came with them. Have pity for your Savior, so cruelly treated. Nobody can stop us from loving our pre-born brothers and sisters. Those stronger than we may strip us of popularity, possessions, or power, but they cannot strip us of love. We love others with the same love that Christ showed for us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The eleventh station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider Jesus thrown down upon the cross. He stretched out his arms and offered to his eternal Father the sacrifice of his life for our salvation. They nailed his hands and feet, and then raising the cross, left him to die in anguish. The powers of this world crucified the God who made this world. All power and authority come from God. All who exercise power have to account for it before the throne of God. We pray that those in government may use their powers to protect the innocent babies in the womb. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Twelfth Station Jesus Dies Upon the Cross We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how your Jesus, after three hours of agony on the cross, is finally overwhelmed with suffering and abandoning himself to the weight of his body, bows his head and dies. 
Our Lord died. So many of his children have died with him. His passion is relived with every abortion, one every 20 seconds in our country. We only know a fraction of the horror of this act in the sight of God. We only know a fraction of the horror of Christ's crucifixion. May all our brothers and sisters killed by abortion rest in Christ's peace and saved and be saved by his cross. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The thirteenth station, Jesus is taken down from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how, after our Lord had died, he was taken down from the cross by two of his disciples, Joseph and Nicodemus, and placed in the arms of his afflicted mother. She received him with unutterable tenderness and pressed him close to her bosom. Mary experienced the pain of holding her dead son. So many mothers grieve after their abortions. We ask that Mary may comfort them, help them face the truth about abortion, and lead them to forgiveness and healing. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be world without end. Amen. The 14th station, Jesus is placed in the sepulcher. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you. Because by your holy cross you have redeemed the world. Consider how the disciples carried the body of Jesus to its burial, while his holy mother went with them and arranged it in the sepulcher with her own hands. They then closed the tomb, and all departed. A tomb is a memorial. It helps us remember the one who can no longer speak. May we and our society remember the babies who cannot speak. May we also remember our Lord's resurrection and his promise of eternal life. He has conquered abortion because he has conquered death. May we bring his victory to every part of the world. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our prayer to Jesus Christ crucified. Look down with favor, O Lord, we beseech you, on this your assembly, for which our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered, delivered to the hands of the wicked men, and suffer the torment of the cross, who lives and reigns, world without end. 
Amen. <clears throat> okay. June, uh, Ju it's June this month. June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. As May was the month of Mary, our Blessed Mother, and June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, does it not follow that as May leads into June, Mary leads us to her, to her the love of her son, symbolized by his heart? Denise, please tell us the history of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Yes. Um, the history of the Feast of the Sacred Heart of Jesus, this is from Catholic Encyclopedia. Devotion to the Sacred Heart is a form of devotion to the person Jesus and especially to his love. The Catholic Encyclopedia details a history of this devotion. It observed that from the time of St. John and St. Paul, there has always been in the church something like devotion to the love of God, who so loved the world as to give it his only begotten son and to the love of Jesus, who has so loved us as to deliver himself, deliver himself up for us. But accurately speaking, this is not the devotion to the sacred heart, as it pays no homage to the heart of Jesus as the symbol of his love for us. From the earliest centuries, Christ's open side and the mystery of blood and water were meditated upon, and the church was beheld issuing from the side of Jesus, as Eve came forth from the side of Adam. But there is nothing to indicate that, during the first ten centuries, any worship was rendered the wounded heart. It is in the 11th and 12th centuries that we find the first unmistakable indications of devotions to the Sacred Heart. Through the wound in the side, the wounded heart was gradually reached, and the wound in the heart symbolized the wound of divine love. In the Benedictine and Sister Sician monasteries, devotion arose, although it is impossible to say what where the first text, St. Gertrude, um, circa 1302, had a vision on the feast of John the Evangelist. She was resting her head near the wound in the Savior's side and hearing the beating of the divine heart. She asked St. John if on the right night of the Last Supper he had felt this delightful pulsations while he had never spoken of the fact. St. John replied that this revelation had been reserved for subsequent ages when the world, having grown cold, would have need it to be rekindled its love. From the 13th to the 16th century, the devotion was practiced as a private, individual devotion of the mystical order. In the 16th century, the devotion took an onward step and passed from the domain of mysticism into that of Christian aestheticism. It was constituted an objective devotion with prayers already formulated and special exercises of which the value was extolled and practice commended. The devotion to the Sacred Heart developed further during the 17th century. Ascetic writers spoke of it, especially those of the Society of Jesus, Jesuits, Alvarez de Paz, Louis de la Puente, St. George and Noet, and Father Drzezbinski, small work, Meta Cordonium Cor Jesus. Emily? How has the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus greatly increased by Sister Mary Margaret Aliquay? Quisha. The devotion, yeah, the devotion was greatly increased by the visions of Saint Margaret Mary Alcoque. Uh, that was from sixteen. Uh, she lived from sixteen forty seven to sixteen ninety. A French visitandine nun at the convent of Paray Le Monial. She had a vision of Christ's heart on the feast of St. John that was similar to that of St. Gertrude. Jesus permitted her to rest her head upon his heart and then disclosed to her the wonders of his love, telling her that he desired to make this known to mankind and to diffuse the treasures of his goodness and that he had chosen her for this work. 
That was probably in December 27, 1673. In June or July of 1674, Sister Margaret Mary said, Jesus asked to be honor, honored under the figure of his heart of flesh and asked for a devotion of expiatory love, frequent communion, communion on the first Friday of each month, and the observance of holy hours. Remember, today is First Friday. In another vision, on the Feast of Corpus Christi, 1675, Sister Margaret Mary reported that Jesus told her, Behold, the heart has so loved men. Instead of gratitude, I receive from the greater part of mankind only in gratitude. Jesus then asked for a feast of reparation on the Friday after the octave of Corpus Christi, bidding her to consult Father de la Combière, then superior of the small Jesuit house of Paré. He recognized the action of the Spirit of God and consecrated himself to the Sacred Heart and directed Sister Margaret Mary to write down her account and to circulate it throughout France and England. Sister Margaret Mary Alacoque was canonized in the 20th century. And this one is from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Only the heart of Christ, who knows the depths of his Father's love, could reveal to us the abyss of his mercy in so simple and beautiful a way. And this one is from... Uh, a prayer by Sister Margaret Mary Alacoque. From the depth of my nothingness, I prostrate myself before thee, O most sacred, divine, and adorable heart of Jesus, to pay thee all the homage of love, praise, and adoration in my power. Amen. And again from the Catechism of the Catholic Church, I think it's paragraph 2669. The prayer of the church venerates and honors the, sac the heart of Jesus just as it invokes his most holy name. It adores the incarnate word and his heart, which out of love for men, he allowed to be pierced by our sins. Christian prayer loves to follow the way of the cross in the Savior's steps. Denise, can you please explain how Jesus' sacred heart is expressed most profoundly in the Eucharist? Yes. Christ's sacred heart of love is expressed most profoundly in the Blessed Sacrament, the Eucharist. God's giving of himself to celebrate joyously the Feast of Corpus Christi, which typically falls within the month of June. How appropriate this dip is. Devotion to the Eucharist and to the Sacred Heart are as inseparable as devotion is to the mystery of Christ's human and divine love. In the Sacred Host dwells the God-Man, Jesus. In his person pulses his heart, through which we are loved with the perfection of his humanity, the fullness of his Godhead. One person who not only loves, but is love. St. Peter Julian Imard instructs us, let us learn to honor the Sacred Heart in the Eucharist. Let us never separate them. Use the month of June to get acquainted or reacquainted with the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You'll be glad you did. Devotion to the Sacred Heart is a wonderful historical expression of Church's piety for Christ, her spouse and Lord. It calls for a fundamental attitude of conversion and reparation, of love and gratitude, apostolic commitment and dedication to Christ and his saving work. There are two things that must always be found together in the devotion to the Sacred Heart, Christ's heart of flesh and Christ's love for us. True devotion to the Sacred Heart means devotion to the divine heart of Christ insofar as his heart represents and recalls his love for us. Love of the Sacred Heart of Jesus is wonderful. Did you know that there are 12 promises of the Sacred Heart for those who are faithfully devoted? Emily, please tell us what those 12 promises are. 
Uh, yes, thank you. Um, number one, I will give them all the graces necessary for their state of life. And second, I will give peace in their families. Third, I will console them in all their troubles. Fourth, I will be their refuge in life and especially in death. Fifth, I will abundantly bless all their undertakings. Number six, sinners shall find in my heart the source and infinite ocean of mercy. Seven, tepid souls shall become fervent. Eight, fervent souls shall rise speedily to great perfection. Ninth, I will bless those places wherein the image of my sacred heart shall be exposed and venerated. Tenth, I will give to priests the power to touch the most hardened hearts. Eleventh, persons who propagate this devotion shall have their names eternally written in my heart. And number twelve, in the excess of the mercy of my heart, I promise you that all that my all-powerful love will grant to all those who will receive communion on first Fridays for nine consecutive months the grace of final repentance. They will not die in my displeasure, nor without re receiving the sacraments, and my heart will be their secure refuge in that last hour. Aren't those great? Yeah. How beautiful. Yeah. Yes. Okay, so uh, now we will pray the Katina Legionis. Who is she that comes forth as the morning rising, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army set in battle array? My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. He looks on his servant in her lowliness. Henceforth all ages will call me blessed. The Almighty works marvels for me. Holy his name. His mercy is from age to age on those who fear him. He puts forth his arm in strength and scatters the proud hearted. He casts the mighty from their thrones and raises the lowly. He fills the starving with good things, sends the rich away empty. He protects Israel, his servant, remembering his mercy. The mercy promised to our fathers, to Abraham and his sons forever. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Who is she that comes forth as the morning rising, fair as the moon, bright as the sun, terrible as an army set in battle array? O Mary, conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to you. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, our mediator with the Father, who has been pleased to appoint the most blessed Virgin, your mother, to be our mother also and our mediatrix with you, mercifully grant that whoever comes to you seeking your favors, may rejoice to receive all of them through her. Amen. And our concluding prayers, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We fly to your patronage, O Holy Mother of God, despise not our prayers and our necessities, but ever deliver us from all dangers, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Mary Immaculate, Mediatrix of all graces, Pray for us. Saints Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. Pray for us. All you heavenly powers, Mary's legion of angels. Pray for us. Saint John the Baptist. Pray for us. Saints Peter and Paul. Pray for us. Confer, O Lord, on us, who serve beneath the standard of Mary, that fullness of faith in you and trust in her, to which it is given to conquer the world. Grant us a lively faith animated by charity, which will enable us to perform all our actions from the motive of pure love of you and ever to see you and serve you in our neighbor, a faith firm and immovable as a rock, through which we shall rest tranquil and steadfast amid the crosses, toils, and disappointments of life. 
a courageous faith, which will inspire us to undertake and carry out without hesitation great things for your glory and for the salvation of souls, a faith which will be our legion's pillar of fire, to lead us forth united, to kindle everywhere the fires of divine love, to enlighten those who are in darkness and in the shadow of death, to inflame those who are lukewarm, to bring back life to those who are dead in sin, and which will guide our own feet in the way of peace, so that the battle of life over, our legion may reassemble without the loss of anyone in the kingdom of your love and glory. Amen. May the souls of our departed legionaries and the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go ahead. And, and the prayer for the beatification of our servant of God, Frank Duff. God, our Father. You inspired your servant, Frank Duff, with a profound insight into the mystery of your church, the body of Christ, and of the place of Mary, the mother of Jesus, in this mystery. In his immense de desire to share this insight with others, and in filial dependence on Mary, he formed her legion to be a sign of her maternal love for the world, and a means of enlisting all her children in the church's evangelizing work. We thank you, Father, for the graces conferred on him, and for the benefits accruing to the church from his courageous and shining faith. With confidence, we beg you that through his intercession, you grant the petition we lay before you. We ask too that if it be in accordance with your will, the holiness of his life may be acknowledged by the church for the glory of your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We thank you for listening. We would like to acknowledge the following who made this broadcast possible. Father Joseph Pikarski, pastor of the St. Mary of the Assumption Catholic Church in Hocassin, Delaware. A.J. Laporta, who provided the music. Jim White, who led the Divine Mercy Chaplet. And all the members of the Legion of Mary Wilmington Curia. If you like our content, please subscribe to our channel and your comments are welcome. We would like to remind everyone that we still continue our 54-day Rosary Novena daily at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you. Please listen to our Divine Mercy Holy Hour again next Friday at 3 p.m. God bless.